we can come up with a scientifically designed and tested program for people and just put it on video and it's going to be just as efficient as as having a personal trainer and how did you even market the product at that time i just thought how many millions of people if they saw something on tv or the web that actually looked reasonable they would probably buy it then because it made sense during my high school years uh, yeah p90x was everywhere i mean i remember that uh, very vividly but then they were like well what next and my partner and I were just about to turn 40. And we were like, you know, I've never had a hard body. I've never been one of those ripped guys on the cover of Men's Health, you know? I showed a picture of my before and afters to my parents. And my mom says to me, whose face, whose body did you put your face on? Carl Deichler, the visionary CEO behind the incredible success of Beachbody, now known as Body. Under his leadership, the company has revolutionized the fitness industry, boasting an impressive revenue of over $1 billion. With a career spanning over four decades, Deichler has been a trailblazer pioneering unconventional and highly effective methods to help individuals reach their health and fitness goals. We have 135 of these programs now, and each one of them sort of spins the Rubik's Cube a little bit, appeal to somebody whose problem is a little different. First company in the world that let people who struggle with fitness monetize it. The Avenue of the Strongest is a podcast dedicated to exploring the lives and experiences of the most inspiring individuals from around the world. Each episode features interviews with fascinating guests who share their insights and wisdom on a variety of topics, including education, impact, motivation, health, and learning. Here are your hosts, Aniette Chowdhury and Vlad Suleiman. Carl, welcome to the show. It's an absolute pleasure having you. Thanks, guys. Great to be here. You know, for those of you who are not familiar, Carl is the CEO of Body, previously known as Beachbody. They are a powerhouse in the fitness and nutrition space with programs and products that you have certainly heard of before. P90X, Insanity 21, uh, sorry, Insanity, 21 Day Fix, Psychology, and many more. Carl, I would like to start our conversation by taking it way back. Now, I came across a story that you were initially rejected by every college you applied to, but managed to talk your way into Ithaca College after a memorable lunch. Is that true? And how did you manage to persuade the dean to change your rejection into the acceptance? You're going to make me cry right here at the top of the podcast. That's not, you're like Oprah. Um, <laughs> uh, just don't ask me what kind of tree I think I am. So, um, yeah, that's a funny story. Um, look, I, I did not get great grades in school. I've been working basically full time since I was 12 and uh, my family owned a little theater. So so I was, you know, I was vocational very young. And um, so I didn't have the grades. You know, I was a, maybe a decent B student, C, B student. SATs weren't anything to brag about. But vocationally, I was 20 years ahead of my peers. Um, and uh, because I was so focused and passionate about communications and um, creativity uh, with electronic media. So the so the so on the surface, I didn't look like I was going to be a great find as a student. So I felt that you know, the one school I wanted to go to was Ithaca College in upstate New York, which has a great communications program. And so I, when they rejected me, I called them up and asked the dean of the School of Communications if uh, we could meet. And, and we did. And we, uh, and particularly the school of what they called corporate organizational media. So uh, he and I sat down, his name was Palmer Dyer, great guy. And uh, he told me that, you know, the grades weren't there, the SAT scores weren't there. And I said, look, if all you're looking for is those metrics, I totally understand you made the right choice. But um, but I've been doing what you teach in this major for the last 10 years, both for my high school. I ran a media center. We were one of the only schools in the state of Pennsylvania that already had a color TV studio in the high school. This is in the late seventies, right? Early eighties. So, 
Uh, so I said, you know, showed him a videotape of some things that I'd produced as a 16, 17 year old. And then I made the close. I said, I said, look, if you're looking for people who are going to get great grades uh, and impress you on the dean's list and all these things, I'm not your guy. If you're looking for somebody who's going to take this education and get everything possible out of it and absolutely reflect, reflect incredibly well on what you can do with a communications degree from Ithaca College, there is nobody that you can add to your roster this year better than me. Now, I'm going to go to lunch with my friend who's going over at Cornell on the other hill and uh, seeing if he can get in there. And I'll come back up after lunch and you let me know if I should go talk to Boston College or, or Emerson. I went to lunch, went back up, and they accepted me. Where did you get all this courage? Because I think 99% of people, when they reject it, they just, ah, okay, it's not for me. Yeah. You know, I don't know that it was like I, they'd already rejected me. So what were they going to do? Just reject me again. It was a fun road trip with a friend. Uh, and and I really wanted in the school. And I really, you know, I think courage comes from belief. Um, and I really believed it, that, uh, that I knew, you know, I just know what other kids do with a college education. They're going to look for some job and they're going to be a middle manager unless they're, they've got some other sharper edge. And I knew that I had an edge of, Uh, of again, voc vocational approach to using communications to uh, solve problems. That's what I wanted to do, and um, so I just I just knew it was a a good fit. I just had to make sure they understood it, and then if they didn't if they didn't accept me, then I'd I'd figure it out from there. This podcast is sponsored by Argo Prep, an award-winning educational publisher serving over a million students nationwide. If you're a kindergarten to eighth grade teacher or principal, be sure to check out our supplementary workbooks to get your students ready for standardized state testing. We cover all subjects from kindergarten to eighth grade. Use the coupon code AVENUE for a 25% discount off of all purchase orders. Visit us today at argoprep.com slash store. Now, since we speak about the beginning, what was it like uh, for the beach body? How do you even got this idea to create this kind of company? Um, I had been working in what they call direct response media for probably, I'd say, almost 10 years before I started uh, the, the company that became what is called now Body, B-O-D-I. Um, and... Uh, one of the companies that I was working for, we were creating products and doing little commercials on TV that would sell those products on TV. And uh, one of the products that I created for that company was called Eight Minute Abs. And and it was literally because to, it was to solve my own problem because I don't like working out and I don't like eating healthy. And, you know, after college, you put on 15, 20 pounds because you're not as active as you are anymore as you were. So So I said, you know, if I could just do 10 minutes of abs a day, I'd probably look better and feel better than I do now. So we shot this little video, made a commercial for it, and we sold like 2 million copies of it for 20 bucks. Like it was just four of us in a little office. And um, I mean, that that product took off. There was I remember one time I went to see this movie called Something About Mary. And uh, literally I'm sitting watching this movie and they start talking about eight minute abs in the screenplay. And I'm like, wait, what? Like the world is spinning around me right now. And so so I said to my partner at the time, um, I got a bunch of other ideas that, that would help people like me who don't automatically love it, this lifestyle, this active lifestyle, but would help people like me engage in it because I'm, I'm more goal oriented. And uh, he said, you know what? Not interested. I want to build more of a media business here. So I said, okay. I sold him my interest back and, uh, and you know, couple, had a couple of stints in, the, in between, raised some money, and uh, that, that became the Beachbody company. And, uh, and, and it was really just based on the observation that not everybody can, can afford a personal trainer. Right. But, and and many people like, you know, YouTube was around then people would go to YouTube for free content or join a gym and wander around and just try to figure it out 
thinking that they will magically be motivated and stay the course. But what always happens, what would happen to people like me is you get five, six, seven days into it, you're sore. You know, you get what they call a cortisol response. You get some inflammation because your muscles are healing themselves and you feel actually fatter in the first week or two. And you're like, well, this program sucks. So unless you know that you're doing a program that's been tested and proven to be efficient, you don't know that you're going to get results with your own little concoction that you're putting together on YouTube or the program that some high school kid, you know, some kid just out of high school is a personal trainer at your gym is like, well, now you do some curls and now you do a, some jumping jacks. Like, what does he know? So I said, look, we can come up with a scientifically designed and tested program for people and just put it on video and it's going to be just as efficient as as having a personal trainer, but it's going to be like at a, a hundredth of the cost. And that's just that's just good value creation. So the, the first really big program that we created was called Power 90. Uh, and Power 90 was just basically, look, we're all busy. If I could just get, if I could just lose this 20 pounds, if I could focus on it before the wedding or before the vacation, uh, then... I'll achieve that goal. So that's what power 90 is like. I'm going to power through it. I'm going to find that half hour a day for 90 days. And then of course the, it, it, what got, what happened was people did power 90 and that was a huge, that was a first big success for Beachbody. But then they were like, well, what next? And my partner and I were just about to turn 40 and we were like, you know, I've never had a hard body. I've never been one of those ripped guys on the cover of men's health, you know? And, so we called it our last hurrah and we said to Tony Horton, look, can you come up with a sequel to Power 90? And we'll call it Power 90 Extreme, which turned into P90X Extreme or P90X rather. And uh, and that thing was just a blockbuster, our first billion dollar product, because again, same thing. Gravity's free. You don't need a lot of equipment. What you need is instruction and a plan. And Tony came up with this idea of muscle confusion so that the body wouldn't plateau at all during the 90 days. So you're constantly, every day is kind of, or every week is like day, week one. And so for 90 days, you're on a catalyst to results. And by the by the end of those 12 weeks or so, 13 weeks, um, like I was so ripped. I showed a picture of my before and afters to my parents. Um, they, they, you know, I was living in California. They were in Philadelphia. I, I sent them my pictures. And my mom says to me, Whose face, whose body did you put your face on? I'm like, mom, that's me. She's like, come on. That's like one of these Photoshop things. I'm like, no, that's really me. So this has been variations on the theme now for 25 years is create programs that help people who want to know they're getting results, but they don't feel like working out with a trainer. I certainly don't. They don't feel like working out in public. I certainly don't, but they want the, the structure to stay with it day by day and the gratification of then after 30 days or after 90 days to know that you finished something like this is, this is my Mount Everest. I'm never going to climb Mount Everest, but I finished P90X or I finished insanity. You know, that's this, these are the projects that I have throughout the year, which is why it's 60 years old. I'm in pretty good shape still. How old were you when you started the first product? Um, well, it's 25 years. So I guess I was 35, 36. And how did you even market the product at that time? Well, like I said, I, I was, I was good at direct response marketing. So, um, and particularly infomercials. So we used infomercials to tell a story and, and the, the premise was, you know, the infomercial business was populated with, you just, there was some good products, but there was like tons of scams, right? Mm, um, yeah. like, you know, like guys would sell products that you just didn't deliver, um, fitness gimmicks and, you know, you know, magic pills and all this stuff. And I thought, wait a minute, I would never buy any of these things from TV, but if, if, because they don't like, you know, seeing somebody work on their butt or work on their upper body and they're not breaking a sweat. They're not going to get results, so don't. I'm not going to buy that. So I just thought, 
how many millions of people, if they saw something on TV or the web that actually looked reasonable, like, okay, I'm going to have to put that level of work in, they would probably buy it then because it made sense. And uh, so that was the premise. So we decided to use this form of, of advertising, the long form infomercial. And that's how the business took off. It, then it evolved really an interesting evolution where our customers became our greatest salespeople because they were dropping the weight and they, and you couldn't shut them up. Like if you, if there was a person that finished P90X or 21 day fix at a picnic with the family, you couldn't get them to stop talking about the program. So we thought, well, wait a minute, if they're doing that for nothing, what would happen if we actually gave them an incentive uh, and be the first company in the world that let people who struggle with fitness monetize it by saying on your Instagram or Facebook, hey, I'm doing this program. I'm going to do it for six weeks. If you want to join it, do it with me and you know we can get ripped together. And uh, And maybe people, maybe more people would be inclined to start if it could also have a financial upside. So we created a thing called Team Beach Body. Now it's Team Body. Again, that's B-O-D-I. And, uh, and we've got tens of thousands of people who are really our greatest endorsement and also our greatest advertisement because they're living this experience of, of what we call the total solution, fitness, nutrition, and, and biohacking supplements that help you get results without... Um, having to spend thousands of dollars on trainers or, or medications. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, I was speaking to Vlad before you came on. He's not too familiar with P90X for, for good reason. He came to America after that, uh, after that time, he he's from Uzbekistan. Uh, but during my high school years, uh, yeah, P90X was everywhere. I mean, I remember that uh, very vividly. So you guys did a fantastic job marketing. I mean, I think it speaks for itself. I mean, Thanks. I think you ask any high school guy, they have heard of P90X, at, at least during my age, you know. Uh, yeah. But now, I don't know if this is true. So let me let me circle back. Because as I was doing some prep, prep work, and you let me know if this is true or not, apparently you thought it was a terrible idea that, to go with P90X because it would appeal to a very small audience because it was so extreme. Is that true? And if so... No, no it's, okay. uh, it, so it's not true. Well, here's... It's partially true. It's not me. Okay. I wanted the program and I pulled Tony Horton aside. We were at some function and uh, he's the trainer from Power 90. And I said, this is what I want to do. I want to do this P90X thing. And he said, no, it's the audience is too limited. There's, you okay. know, there's, there's a real obesity problem in the world. We should do something that helps more people just engage in something. And I was like, well, we can do that too, but I'm going to do this P90X thing. And we're going to make it a powerful brand. It's going to be super cool. So I'd love it if you did it, but otherwise we're going to do it with somebody else. And he said, okay, I'll do it. And uh, turned out it, you know, and, and what, what's interesting about it is it ended up, I think, inspiring more people than we would have done if we had sort of, um, you know, went to a lowest common denominator. Instead, what we did was, showed something really aspirational. And we had people, frankly, who had no business doing P90X who lost, like we had people lose 100, 150, 180 pounds wow. doing multiple rounds of this. And what they would do is they would modify the program, but they were so motivated and inspired by working out with people that they would never get to work out with at the gym, right? Because they would right. feel outcast or embarrassed. But there they are with Tony and these other fit people. and They're having a blast. And you feel like you're part of the gang telling corny jokes and stuff. And uh, people just do round after round of it. And that's, that's why it was like lightning in a bottle because it was legitimate, you know? Like we didn't have people, they weren't all leggings and – and, uh, you know, fancy neon colors, like people were wearing industrial boots and, you know, they're, they're cut off denims and stuff like that. It wasn't like any other workout video that you'd ever seen. And what we learned from that, you know, now we have like that was in the early days. That was probably our, I would say, maybe the 10th program mm -hmm. that we created. We have 135 of these programs now. 
And each one of them sort of spins the Rubik's Cube a little bit to just appeal to somebody whose problem is a little different. Like the one mm -hmm. that I'm going to be starting this July is called Body Lava. That's B-O-D-I Lava, which is lava for short. And the premise of that is it, in the summer, um, it's kind of hard to commit to that, you know, because you're scheduled sort of all over the place in the summer, kids out of school and stuff like that, and you travel. So I wanted something that I personally could finish and that was going to be really, really efficient, which means it needed to be short, it needed to be comprehensive, and no equipment. So Body Lava is this fusion of power yoga and primal moves, which are super good for like, again, I'm 60, so I get joint pain, shoulder, hips, knees, ankles, and primal moves really sort of lubricate and open up your agility and mobility. Uh, so I've got a huge group starting with me on July, on really the first week of July, but we're, most of us are starting July 1st. Uh, it goes on sale June 27th. And, um, and you know, we'll probably have, um, I'm guessing, close to maybe 100,000 people starting that program wow. at the same time. Because wow. again, in the summer, like to have a project, what's your summer project? To have a project that you can just do 20 minutes a day. Like what's beautiful is you put this thing on, countdown clock starts and the, and it like gets to 19 minutes and you're like, well, man, this thing's almost done. It's, it's That's intense because you're squeezing a lot into that 20 minutes, but it's like five days a week, six weeks. The results are outrageous. Cause again, we test everything that we do. So, uh, so over the course of from the power 90 and P 90 X days to now we've got a catalog that there's something right, some structure, right. For everybody who's like me, who's just not inclined to become a fitness enthusiast overnight. They just want a project they can complete. Mm -hmm. So I should definitely join that because I am not a fitness enthusiast, but I know Vlad is, but uh, all right. So you'll catch me on July. You said July 2nd. Well, you can, you can start, you can start with me July 1st, but the, any people can start any time that week. If they want to be in the group with us again, we'll have this big group. You and I, all right, here's what we're going to do. You and I will, text each other back and forth. We're going to, I'm going to hold you to this, man. You're doing this Sounds program. <laughs> How long is it? 20 minutes, six weeks, 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes Come a day, on, six man. weeks. You can long. do it. Oh, I can do that. All right. I see I'm <laughs> over promising a lot of people nowadays, Vlad. <laughs> uh, it's fine. You're hooked in now, man, but you need to do it. That's the thing you're saying, you know, I'm not a fitness person, but you do need to do it. You're right. You are correct. Here's the thing. And Tony says this better than anybody. If you, as you age, how old are you? 30. Okay. So you're a kid, but that, but, but it's, it's like this, like this curve. Yes. So, so you're going to slow down. So then I'm climbing up a hill here. You're going to slow down. If you don't stay ahead of the clock starting now, the clock is going to pass you and, and it's you're hard correct. to get it back. It's going to punch so, you on that. Seriously. No, you're you, absolutely correct. You're absolutely, I, I, and I've read the studies. It shows e, e, actually starting at 30, things go south real quick. Your muscle loss picks up as well, starting at 30. Yeah. So, so yeah, don't no. let it happen. And, yeah. and that, that's the thing that I think gets in the way for so many of us, including me. Like you think, well, if I can't do a full 45 minutes or an hour, and if I'm not spent and beat and sore the next day, it didn't really happen. What I've found over the course of the last two years, we, we created a category in the company called health esteem, which is where you're not just focused on how ripped you are, what's your weight today, but instead you want to combine your health and your self-esteem and feel like what you're just that one day, that 20 minutes or even that 10 minutes of lifting or walking after dinner is contributing to having a positive health esteem for yourself. Not having that feeling in the back of your head like, man, I am delinquent for not yeah. respecting my own personal health and sovereignty by taking care of this machine. Because this that's what this machine requires. If you, if you want to be agile and be able to lift your kids and play with your kids well into their adult years and do adventures with the family, you, you have to chase a little bit of discomfort, you know, five days a week, I like to say, or 
the discomfort will find you. Like if you said, hey, I'm not going to do anything and you just laid in bed, give it a week or two and you're going to be uncomfortable laying in bed, just doing nothing. So, all right. So how about we just take that 20 minutes and chase discomfort, challenge discomfort. Screw you, discomfort. I'll show you who's boss. And then the rest of your day your and week, you're going to be more comfortable because you've got your every everything's lubricated, your muscles are firing, you've got some bulk in your muscles, you've got strength. It's just a night and day difference of lifestyle. No, you're absolutely correct. And I look forward to it. A hundred thousand people. That's very impressive. Well, we'll see. We gotta get there first. It doesn't it doesn't launch till June twenty seven. Nonetheless, nonetheless well, let me let me backtrack. Uh the number is not really what matters. But you're right though, in the statement that you made, twenty minutes a day, I mean that is and, and that's really all you need and to see massive results. So I'm in. So Vlad, okay. I, I already know you work out two hours I'll, a day, but I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll force you in as well. I mean, two I work out, no, not two hours, one hour a day and then sauna and cold plunge and all this kind of stuff. He's in the gym every single day, <laughs> but Vlad, I'll pass it to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I want to speak about the rebranding part of the company. So from the beach body to body, B-O-D-I, and I think which was a significant move. I know because we also rebranded from Argo Brothers to Argo Prep, and it was huge for us. I mean, we, I mean, it's a lot custom, of crap. Cu customers couldn't identify us, the logo, the website, all this kind of stuff needs to be changed. But what made you to, to change from the Beachbody to BODY? Um, because the business matured over the course of two decades to the point that it was no longer just about vanity metrics. And not, not that it all ever was just about vanity metrics, but certainly Beachbody connotes a visual of, um, you know, abs and swimsuits and bikinis and stuff. And, and that's still fair game, it's super motivating. But in this day and age, particularly as you've got, you know, weight loss pharmaceuticals out there, um, the most important thing is for people to understand that their overall health and well-being is more important than the vanity metrics. And that is the, the um, your independence is absolutely de dependent on your health. Like, you know, I, I like to say, what, what are the, what's the most valuable commodity in the world? gold, diamonds, oil, water. You could have buildings filled with that stuff, acres of oil. But man, if you're not healthy, it doesn't matter at all. The oh most God. valuable commodity in your life, every listener on here right now, if they don't have their health or something's creeping up on them, that is a lifestyle and, and a happiness destroyer. So the term beach body was too limiting for us. And uh, we already owned the URL bodi.com because it stood for mm. beach body on demand interactive. Cause we have mm. this, uh, we have this content that's really interesting on our, on our subscription platform. Like people can buy the programs outright. So body lava, for instance, people can buy it for about 60 bucks. You have access to it forever or they can, when it goes into the library, it doesn't go to the library for six months, but when it goes into the library, you've got access to all the content and our live content that we shoot. What's interesting about the live content is it's interactive. It's the only platform that literally has a screen filled with other subscribers who are doing the workout at the same time. So the trainer, as they're calling out cues, can see if people are getting it right. And so we'll have the technician on there and be like, hey, you got a busted cue. They don't understand what you mean by this move. So they requeue it. No other platform has that visibility. You're just sort of queuing into a cave. You don't know what's going on inside there except on the body platform. So uh, that's why it's called interactive. But anyway, we just, a four letter URL is, is a pretty good thing to have anyway. Definitely. And the beach body brand never really had that much recognition. P90X, Insanity, 21 Day Fix, Shakeology. These are the things that solve people's problems. Beachbody was just the container. So, so we had the opportunity to open up 
um, who what we mean to people by taking the connotation of Beachbody out of the name. And yes, to, to some degree, it's a bit of a setback in terms of recognition for the people who were aware of it. But to the 180 million people who are overweight or obese, it's a completely meaningless brand change because they didn't know about Beachbody either. So right. our job is to define body in a way that does not um, repel people who don't even identify. They just want to be able to get up and down from the ground. If they're sitting in front of the TV on the floor, they want to be able to get up without asking for somebody's help. You know, like they want to be able to enjoy their kids or lift the groceries or whatever. And, and so we want them to be able to identify with a platform whose one mission is to help people achieve their goals to live healthy, fulfilling lives, not vanity metrics, not ripped abs, not thin thighs, but achieve their goals to lead healthy, fulfilling lives and body fit that mission much better than Beachbody. Mm -hmm. and, you see, that. and you're saying that the platform is interactive. Uh, do you plan or maybe you are already integrating AI into it? And what do you think about the AI in general? Will it uh, affect a lot on the wellness fitness uh, field? Yeah. Um, well, look, AI is going to affect everything. And um, I'm not as smart as the machine to know how it will affect things necessarily. Um, I think in our case, it's, uh, um, I don't want to get ahead of the curve. We haven't announced anything, but we're definitely looking at what it can do. But here's what I think it won't be able to do. Um, it won't necessarily change the psychology, the behavioral problem or prioritization problem that uh, is undermining people's um, likelihood to work out anyway. For instance, AI in and of itself, one of the reasons that it's such a big deal, uh, and I don't know if you guys found yourself doing this, but just knowing that AI is right there. Like sometimes you need to think about something. Ooh, what is, what is the list of, what are the five things that, the, well, let me just ask AI. Where you normally would go through an intellectual exercise and challenge yourself. Like, let me just ask this thing that's going to spit back an answer. So, so AI itself is already gratifying our laziest tendencies. So I don't think necessarily that they, that AI is going to inspire me to work out more. Um, now it might spit back, Hey, these are the best moves for you. This is a good plan for you. Yeah. It will make more individualized, but I got to tell you in my experience in 25 years, people don't care. In fact, they don't trust individualization. What they want to see, show me the program that got 10,000 people mm, help them point. lose 30 pounds because AI, you're a machine. You've never helped somebody lose 30 pounds, but Here's a program that this company tested that actually does it. Now, could AI help people understand it, stay engaged with it? Perhaps. But in terms of the actual behavior of it, people need to trust that they're going to get the results if they're going to get up at 5 a.m. and do the work. That's that's my opinion. And But I, I wouldn't count AI out, and we got to pay attention and make sure we don't get left behind. That's actually a very interesting statement, that people don't like individualization. In, I mean, in this particular field, in the wellness, <laughs> I want something that works for, for 10,000 people. It's interesting. That's no, that's what, uh, you know, I can remember over the course of the last decade, um, you know, private equity types and venture capital types would be saying, when are you going to, when are you going to get into radical personalization? And, you know, we thought about it and looked at how we might do that, but ultimately People don't trust themselves and they don't they don't trust their personalization in this area. They, you know, in fact, they will do crazy, ridiculous gimmicks knowing that they are irresponsible just because they saw Aunt Sally lost 50 pounds right. before the July 4th picnic, you know. So so it, th there's no correlation to, well, this needs to be right for me. We saw like. I think there was a blood type diet, you know, like all these things. The, the premise might make sense, but I have never seen personalization actually work 
Because ultimately, we, we all have enough in common that we don't need it s- ultimately right. personalized so much that it's, that it's, you know, radically, uniquely designed to me. What I need, what the, the thing that's going to get me out of bed is to know that if I miss today, I'm falling a step behind the 90 day plan that was going to help me lose these 30 pounds. So, so like that's the, that's the, trigger that I need to go off in somebody's head. That's what we need to achieve is that somebody knows that if I don't do it, I don't move forward. And it doesn't need to be personalized. What they need to know is today's chest and back. Day after that's going to be legs. Day after that's going to be core synergistics and so on. That plan is going to get me results because I've seen a thousand people. Their before and afters are so compelling and their life's changed and their their risk of lifestyle disease like hypertension, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes, you know, dramatically turn around. That th- These are the things that motivate people. AI contributing to that? I don't know. Personalization? I don't know. But I do know that people need structure. And the 180 million people, um, there's nothing is going to replace the big step. And the big step is stepping up for yourself mm. and yeah. the requirement to put effort in. That's that's the gap between where I am now and where I want to be is just that decision that I got to put the effort in and I'm not going to be able to automate my way out of it. Carl, I want to move this conversation slightly into an interesting topic over here. Super, super hot topic, GLP-1 drugs. Now, mm-hmm. obviously, these are, for those of you who are not familiar, you may be familiar with uh, words like Ozempic. Uh, I think everybody now is familiar with these terms, a, a magical drug, all right? Morgan Stanley predicts or has predicted recently that over 24 million Americans will be taking these medications by 2035. So I wanted to ask your perspective. What do you think is going to happen uh, what will that do to the exercise industry? Um, uh, I think it's going to be really good for the exercise industry, um, particularly for people like these are designed. These aren't designed for people who need to lose 10 to 15 pounds. These are designed for people who are having insulin responses, who are having real, almost medical issues, losing weight. And and they they can do so much good for them, but they can also be extremely destructive. And, and that's why it's going to be good for the fitness business because so people are going to have people who really need an intervention uh, are going to have this sort of, uh, I, I would call it um, additional catalyst or influence to help them solve the food problem. But that comes with a consequence. When you solve the food problem where you're not getting the body's natural triggers on what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat, um, you've got a real tendency to be malnourished and possibly get anorexic tendencies, right? Because you get tilted. So you're like, hey, I want this thing to get give me results and I have no appetite, so I'm just not going to eat. And we know that that is destructive. So- And the worst thing that can happen, like this is a worst outcome, is that the GLP-1, because of how it uh, changes the way you eat, could end up making your body use muscle for energy. And as your body uses muscle for energy, you're undermining your metabolism because muscle is part of how you burn calories all day long. So the so as your metabolism goes down, you know, eventually there's nothing there and the body starts to consume itself and you're weaker, your metabolism shrinks. And now you're in a never ending cycle that as you start to feed yourself, your body, which is, you know, millions of years of biology trained to hold on to calories if it feels like there's a famine out there. So if it feels like it's being starved, it's now going to hold on to calories because it's like, we got to survive. That's the exact opposite of what you want if you want it to burn stored fat. So Mm -hmm. for people to get the best results and not have negative results from a GLP-1, they're going to need to do resistance training. 
and they're going to need to consume protein and follow a nutrition plan with some discipline. And that's what a company like Body does. In fact, I, Body's the only company that I know that does all three of those things. Um, mm -hmm. We've obviously got plenty of options for people to follow a lifting or resistance program so that they're building or preserving muscle. We've got nutrition plans that are super easy to follow without counting calories. Make sure you get enough protein. And we've got our Shakeology that's around me here. Um, this superfood shake that's got protein, um, uh, fiber for gut health, vitamins and minerals uh, from the fruit and greens blends, and superfood um, nutrition with adaptogen herbs and so on for the antioxidant event, uh, uh, benefits and uh, just just to avoid, you know, the prospect of hastening disease as we age. So so this sort of these three puzzle pieces um, are how people can use GLP-1 really with positive effects as long as they're approaching them with lifestyle change. And, and that's the difficult thing for people to hear. You can't use a GLP-1 medication to avoid doing exercise and eating well, because that's just going to be a real bad outcome. Um, but otherwise, I think it could be very good for companies like ours that are focused on trying to help people be their healthiest. Yeah, I agree with you. The, the, I've, I've seen, and there's a lot of studies currently also being done to see how GLP-1 is it causing and how much muscle loss is actually occurring. And that's dangerous. That is really dangerous, as you mentioned. So, yeah, what do uh, they call it? Ozempic face? Like, yeah, they, yeah. you lose and, muscle so, in your and, face. And, yeah. People are thinking it's another magic pill, you know, they're going to No, you're it. right. The resistance that's training right. will be critical, uh, especially if you're on these drugs, and not to mention uh, uh, the nutrition side of things. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Carl, uh, we'll go ahead. I have We have two last questions from you. So, here in our podcast, we have a tradition where uh, each podcast uh, a guest from the last episode asks a question to the future one. So I'm going to ask a question from the last guest, and then I'm going to ask you to ask one for the future. So the question here, and so this is a, trust me, we've gotten some crazy questions up before, so you kind of got off lucky here. Uh, the question here is, what is the weirdest talent that you have? The weirdest talent? <laughs> <laughs> what on what kind of clown show is this? You know, um, the weirdest you, talent. Oh, you can that I you have. can you can swap out uh, weirdest for strangest or uh, or the coolest something something maybe that is uncommon something that we wouldn't. Suspect. Okay, let me say the 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 least. So I was going to say I'm, I, I can ride a unicycle. That's. That's cool. <laughs> That's weird. Um, but I would say probably the thing that that delights me the most, if I'm allowed to take this moment for myself, um, <laughs> is the fact that uh, I can barefoot water ski. And my probably the one moment that I'm the most proud of is that I learned how to barefoot backwards on one foot. And um, that that was kind of that kind of that one shocked me. Wow. How long did that take? Um, well, it took me a lot of time to learn how to barefoot normally. I was like 16, maybe. And uh, like it hurts your feet. It just took me a while to mm. figure that out. But then I met an instructor and I learned how to barefoot backwards in like 10 minutes. It was, it oh, wow. was once I once I knew the basics of the first part, but then just doing that, like that's something you see in magazines, you see on a video of and you're like, how do they do that? And the fact this guy did it, I had a lot of water going up my nose because you start upside down and like, like I got so much water up my nose. That might be, you know, why I talk so much. I don't know. But um, so I would, I would say that was uh, that that would be that would be my answer. That that's sufficient. That's amazing. And Carl, what question would you like us to ask our next guest? Any question. It could be any question you want. So I'm asking a stranger any question that for your correct. audience to hear. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So I'm glad I didn't get this question. 
Uh, do you end up reversing the question on me? You don't. No, no. Okay. I don't. Um, Unless we're going to have part two of the interview. <laughs> yes, I see. Um, I think we should ask the next guest. What is the most important thing for you to change as soon as possible in order to live the life that you want? Wow. Love that. I love that question. It's very wow. easy. It's, I would ask that question because I think it's very easy for people to sort of be on autopilot and think they're making the changes, but you know that one thing is standing right there in front of them, looking at them like, I'm right here. I'm waiting for you to confront me. And you're doing everything else around it. But there's this one thing that uh, that they know. And I think that's a, I don't think your next guest is going to be very happy with me. <laughs> he will not be or well, she will not be, but they are going to be very lucky because if they're going to answer it, it's going to change their life. Yeah. And that's why we wait till the end of the podcast to ask that. Carl, it's right. been a pleasure. Can you please let us know? I know you were mentioning about the July July 2nd that's coming up. Please uh, uh, provide us with more information on that. I know you have a text number as well as a website. Yeah. Well, yeah. So um, if people want to check out this idea of body lava, they can try it for free. In fact, they can get access to 130 of our sample workouts on something that we call bodyprevews.com. So it's literally over a hundred dollars worth of content. You have access to it for free at B-O-D-I previews.com. But what I would invite your audience is uh, if they want to participate with us as we're going through body lava, 20 minutes a day, five days a week for six weeks. If they text me the word lava by like June 27th um, at this number, I'll send a link with any special offers that we have um, back to your phone number. I, I won't spam me, I promise. So the number to text me is 818-650-4369. Again, 818-650-4369. Just text the word lava. It'll probably ask you a couple of other questions, legal stuff, but, uh, but then I'll, I'll just let you know the group is open where body lava is now available. And then, uh, you know, for 60 bucks, you know, See if you can lose 10 to 15 pounds this summer. It's going to and feel like really amazing. That's what the people in the test group, I've never had a test group that came out of it as shocked at how good they felt after the workout mm -hmm. versus exhausted and how mobile and agile and pain-free they felt after six weeks. Carl, thank you for so much for having a great conversation with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time. That was fun.